Hey, I'm glad you stopped by. My name's John Zudar, and you are watching On Top and Hot. What I do here is I look at OTC and penny stocks that are going to climb, whether they're under the radar, undervalued, have catalysts, whatever, we zoom in on them. Now, these are brought to you by Penny Boys. You probably know them because of PB Alerts. Everybody loves those alerts, putting money in your pocket on a regular basis. But folks, you wanna do that? Go to PBU, Penny Boys University. They will teach you how to trade, how to read the charts, how to find those alerts on your own. You can do this. Now, what I'm doing here today is I am looking at Social Life Network. This is a company I believe is under the radar and undervalued, and so does the company. Now, this company is on the OTC markets. They are listed on the pink tier and are current. They are in good standings. So let's jump right into this and let me show you what they're all about. So what exactly is Social Life Network? Well, specifically speaking, they are a technology business incubator. We'll call that TBI. An incubator is, well, think of the machine for babies or chicken eggs. You put the weakest, uh, youngest, needing the most help in there to be protected and provided for until they're strong enough to carry themselves. And that's what this is. They help startup companies that meet their criteria to fulfill their ultimate end game, whether that be an IPO, a merger, or a buyout. Now, you're probably thinking, so WDLF is a holdings company. No, they're not. The difference between WDLF and a holdings company is that a holdings company invests seed capital. They put out money in the front door helping the company and then down the road as their investment grows and the company gets bigger and bigger, they get their investment back and start to make profits. That is not what WDLF is. WDLF does not give them any money. They will help them connect to funds and capital raisings. But what they supply is seed technology. Their seed technology is the AI powered social network with an e-commerce platform attached. They bring all the sales of the goods to whatever the niche social media is that they're supplying. And in return for this, they receive compensation. They get 5% of all the revenues, whether they come from e-commerce, subscriptions, or ads, they get that right now. And then they hold 15% stock, which they're not public yet, but when they go public, they already have 15% of that company for the long run. And that is their core business. They only look for startup companies that are dealing in niche social media, smaller groups that are untapped but have a lot of potential. Now, you're probably wondering why WDLF even got into niche social media. Isn't social media congested enough with giants like Facebook, who, by the way, began by targeting college kids? And LinkedIn, a few years ago, they were after the HR departments of businesses. And Twitter, well, they have always wanted the news. Oh, and by the way, did you know that every social media platform ever launched, including Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok, all had their start as a niche social media? Now, most startup techs, including the ones I just mentioned, get their start by using a tech accelerator program like WDLF. They are a tech business incubator company that formulates a strategy and ultimately bring the company to an IPO, merge, or buyout. In a nutshell then, Social Life Network is a incubator company. They help startups to make it to the finish line, but they don't invest money, they invest seed technology. And in return, they get 5% fee on their profits and a 15% stake in the company for when they go public or are sold. Now, the whole point to their social media is to connect the marketplace to it. This is not just for people to talk. It's for people to talk and have a place to shop right there where they're talking so that they can find everything they want, not just locally, but globally. And uh, one other part that I wanted to add a little extra to was this artificial intelligence. This is something really special. It does more than you would think. First off, 
for years and years, developers and your programmers and advertisers have been trying to make this work, to bring consumers and marketers together. The problem is there was too much information. They had to keep uh, shrinking the dimension, had to add filters. They had to work with less information because it swamped and overwhelmed the system. AI is a completely the opposite. The more information you give it, the better it works. So we are now able to focus in on things like the unique visitor. That is a key point in this AI. The first time comer to the website, the app, we want them to feel loyal and welcome the very first time they come so that they're guaranteed virtually to come back. We're talking about niche markets where they have little exposure and when you capture someone and bring them in, you don't want to lose them. So the AI they have is primarily focused on turning first time users into loyal users, which is where the token, WDL token comes in handy, not just for the consumer, but also for the businessmen and the little niche companies themselves. It pays for loyalty on all realms. Very interesting. The other thing the AI does is it automatically updates the software. It finds bugs and improves the software automatically with no manpower needed. Currently, Social Life Network has 13 companies in its portfolio that all represent specific niche social media markets. Right here, you can see the identified opportunities that they have in the cannabis, sports, and real estate market, which all truly are underserved and untapped. They have potential like you can't even imagine. Think of cannabis. It has just gone global in the last few years. America is still lagging behind, so obviously our growth is just waiting to happen. They have it targeted that there will be U.S. cannabis sales of $75 billion by 2030. And in the world, they think it will be $2 trillion by 2050. But in saying that, look here, $2 trillion in sports just last year. In one year, $2 trillion. So sports obviously is not a sector you want to neglect in social media. The problem is, is that only a key few sports like baseball, football, and basketball really get the attention. You got some golf in there, you got some soccer in there, but there are still a lot more sports and there are a lot of followers in those sports and they are tapping into those untapped potential markets. And the last one is real estate. Real estate is a big booming market, always has been, always will be. The thing now is, is that there is blockchain and blockchain and real estate are coming together, which is going to truly open this market up worldwide. And the company WDLF has just made a change in how they operate going from cloud-based to blockchain, which I'll cover. And this now is a prime opportunity for them. Now, like I said, they do have 13 companies. Let's take a look at that. Over the last six years, these are the 13 that they have added and are still looking to add more. They have four here that are in the cannabis sector, MJ Link, Weed Life, uh, Weed Life is for the THC, let's get high side. <laughs> hemp Talk is for the cannabinoid, CBD and hemp. And then the MJ Invest for investing in cannabis stocks. And all of these are under one umbrella with the company. Then they have one for space and space exploration. Uh, hunting, which is their fastest growing niche social media company right now. When RV for RV enthusiasts, the real estate company like RE. Cycle fans for bicyclists, social marketplace for soccer, which they call foot posts. Obviously, this one is for golf. They have the racing scene for all different types of races. This is getting bigger and bigger. And then Racket Stars for all those games you play with rackets. Here recently, the company is making milestone after milestone, and they are just about ready to bring three out of their 13 licensee startups onto the market. 
uh, their cannabis has been booming. They originally started this in 2013 just with one, weedlife.com, which was built just for consumer to consumer. But since then, they covered all the other bases with MJ Link, Hemp Talk, and MJ Invest. They now have business to business, CBD retailers to consumers, and investors to executives. So they've covered all their bases here, and they told us that it was back in February of 2020 that they filed the form to start the reg on this one. Uh, the four cannabis social networking platforms combined have grown from 2013 to 2020 to service more than 5.5 million users monthly in over 120 countries. The other milestones on the other side of the coin that's not cannabis, everything else, their residential real estate, hunting, fishing, and camping, racket sports, soccer, golf, and cycling. Now these are social networks, and this is the most important part you have to gather, is that they are combining e-commerce systems for the merchants with the consumer's social media. It is two different types of platforms coming together so that you've got everything right there. And the problem is with uh, the Hunt Post, that is the one that is the biggest winner for them right now. It really changed the consumers to have a place to market. It turns out that 93% of all the hunting, fishing, and camping equipment that can be gotten, the quality stuff, has to be gotten at trade shows. Only 7% of it can be bought at the big box stores, and less than 10% of it is available online. So this creates an avenue for all of that to happen and to bring in just a ton of income and they are quite excited about this one. So the company has three of their licensees that is preparing to IPO. You have Like RE, the real estate company, MJ Link, the cannabis companies, and Hunt Post, their Babe Ruth out of the park company. That's right, these three are getting ready to IPO, haven't got any dates or anything like that, but they're going through their reg offerings and because of the revenues, and because of the 15% ownership, is gonna change the value of the company drastically. Now, this is the whole point to the video. This company does not see their market cap as their true value, and I don't either. The market cap is just the price of the stock times the number of shares, and that is all about us. That is what we think the company is worth. That has got nothing to do with the book value or projected value. And if anybody is going to buy a company, they're gonna buy it based on their projected value. And the companies that they're building may not be bought by public companies, they may be bought by private companies. This company themselves, WDLF, could be bought out by a private company and they will evaluate its value completely differently, which is why this company evaluates themselves far above their 32 million market cap, but rather at $2.1 billion based on all of their company's values added together. Keeping in mind that WDLF is in the business of evaluating the value of companies. And when you're talking about companies that don't have stock on the market, there is a total different way of evaluating them. And their 13 companies are based on these private evaluations. And when you add all of that up, this company, if it was bought by another company, would be worth $2.1 billion. So now you're thinking, whoa, he lost it. He's got Y Combinator up there. No, I need to show you something. You familiar with any of these companies? Reddit, Airbnb, Dropbox? How about DoorDash or Stripe? Twitch? Or how about Coinbase? Well, would you believe that it was Y Combinator that brought all of those companies forward and about 3,000 more? They are an incubator company as well, and they are a private company, and they have valued themselves at over $300 billion. That's what a private evaluation does for you. They don't have a market cap, and it wouldn't be fair to say that they are worth the stock times the price of the shares. 
that isn't a true evaluation. So when WDLF says that they're worth 2.1 billion, they're not just pulling a number out of the air. It is the actual factual math that is used for private companies. Now let's go take a look at some of the information that we can find on them over at the OTC markets and their financials. So we're over here at the OTC market looking at WDLF Social Life Network. They are at a beautiful price right now of under a half a penny, 0042. They did 40% gains today. They are on the pink tier. They are current, they're in good standings. They got a verified profile transfer agent and they have independent directors to boot. You need these if you wanna uplist, whether that be to the QB, which is the next tier up on the OTC, where you must audit your financial or all the way to the NASDAQ. In either case, you've got to have independent directors. Now, speaking of uplisting, they have 7.3 billion shares on the market right now. That's a ton of shares, folks. That is a ton of shares. Now, there has been rumor that this company wants to uplist. Now, I have looked at the financials and I have put in the search for the word uplist. It did not appear in the current 10Q. So, Rumor or not, it does seem to me I heard them say it a few months ago, but in either case, every company wants to uplist when they start making money. What they would need to do is meet the price target of three to four dollars. So most companies have to stretch to get there by doing a reverse split. They may be down at 40 cents or a dollar and can't get there without having to kick the price up and using their shares to do that. Now, just for an example, right now we are at 0042. If they wanted to uplist to the NASDAQ right now, they would have to kick the price up a thousand times. So the price of the share would be $4.20 tomorrow, jumping from 0042 today. But your 4,000 shares would be only four shares tomorrow. Everything is equivalent. Your four shares are worth the same amount of money at $4.20 as your 4,000 were at 0042. But you don't have any potential. Sure, you could sell right now and get out even or let it go up and you can make some money on your four shares. So how do you avoid that? The only thing I can say, folks, is if you believe your company is probably going to uplist and you're probably going to have to stretch to get there with a reverse split, you're going to want to buy as many shares as you can at under a half a penny, right? You're going to want as many as you can get, 10,000, 100,000, because if they do a one in 1,000 split, your 100,000 shares becomes 100 shares. So if you want 10,000, you probably need a million right? Just saying food for thought on any company that's going to uplist. Now, is there any excitement built around this company? We can check that by the relative volume. 30 day average is 69, about 70 million shares a day, which is nothing to complain about. That's good. That's a healthy stock. But Friday did 580 million, almost nine times as many shares. So there was some excitement brewing and I think me knows what it was. There were some financials that came out and rather than me show them to you, let's let them show them to you because they're quite excited about it too. All right, as you can see, Social Life Network Inc. announces record growth in 2021. This is the news. I've highlighted a few spots so I didn't miss anything for you. This is pretty exciting. Uh, they have increased their revenue and at the same time decreased their net losses from the same three month and nine month period for 2021 and they decreased their uh, expenses by 62% year over year for 2020. So when you bottom it all out, that is an increase of 26% over the last year and a 62% decrease from last year. Together you got what? About 88% uh, right there. They say that Social Life Network realized its strongest quarter since becoming public in 2016 and the strongest balance sheet since they launched in 2013. And they're quite happy here because they say that our 2020 and 2021 strategy to retire all convertible debt, decrease operating expenses, increase revenue and launch our new Decentral Life division was realized in Q3 rather than Q4 as predicted. They go on to tell us that despite the ongoing growth of the company since becoming publicly traded in June 2016, they still have a market cap of 20 million. Now, isn't that interesting? 
Now, you probably didn't notice that, but this was put out on Friday, just two days ago, the 5th. And they're telling you that the market cap was at 20. If we come over here, you can see the market cap is at 32 million. So in the morning, it was at 20 million, which they are saying it has been stuck at for years. And Friday, it changed. Boop, there it is, 32 million. It has taken a jump up. What else did they tell us? Partially in response to the lopsided public market cap versus internal valuation that management shared in their Q2 2021 shareholder update. The new Decentral Life Division was launched in Q3 to focus on growth initiatives, including the upgrading of the technology platform that is licensed to the TBI licensees so that it's no longer cloud-based. It is now instead a decentralized blockchain application. That means it's faster and more secure. So folks, you can see there is a ton of things going on here. And the reason the stock went up today is because of this right here. Whenever a company just comes out and declares their value, when they tell you what their assets are, when they tell you why you should be considering them, normally that is all it takes because it's common sense. And the company has told us they are going up in one direction, the right one, going down in the other direction for the right thing. And they have three IPO companies. Once those companies launch, they get 15% stake built onto their assets. It will go onto their finances. Right now, it is all this outside valuation. You can't see the true value of this company as a public company. But once those companies go public, then we're going to see that added onto this and the company will grow exponentially. And then the most current thing that is going on with them right now is their WDLF token. We have news here, a couple pieces came out. One was back, oh, about three months ago. Both of them actually. Uh, Social Life launches new division for decentralized social network project and WDLF token. And this next one is that they actually launched the WDLF token on the Ethereum blockchain. Let's come in and take a look at what they have to say about this. This is something new that they've done for loyalty. Uh, we have officially launched a crypto loyalty points application throughout our social networking platform. We've been working on this milestone for many years now, but needed to have our token launched first before we could move forward with the full network rollout for each of our TBI licensees. Each licensee having a unique business plan, the loyalty points formula had to work for current and future licensees while potentially making certain the utility value of the WDLF token increased over time. So they had a lot of details to work out because there's a lot of players in the game. And from what I can comprehend here, this loyalty coin is for all participants. This is for the consumers. This is for the people that come to the websites, to the apps and social media platforms. This is for the businesses that operate on those platforms. And this is also for the TBI licensees. And let's not forget for the investors as well, because we're the ones buying the tokens. They're earning the tokens and loyalty points. So this is something that the AI, as far as I can extrapolate, has found as an instrument and tool to use to bind all that is being brought together. I told you their most important portion of the AI is focused on unique users, those first time comers. And somehow maybe the incentive of a loyalty point helps to snag and hold onto those new people. Now it seems to me I started this whole thing off by saying WDLF was under the radar. Well, they were up until the time the company put out that PR on Friday saying, here we are, we got lots of value, and they do. That was the best balance sheet they've had since they launched in 2013. The biggest gains they've had since 2016 when they IPO'd. They've dropped their expenses by 62% huge folks. And on top of all of that, they have three of their licensees about ready to IPO. And that is going to give them their 15% stake payoff. 15% in each one of those companies as they grow. And that is going to go on the books. 
I see a lot of growth in this company. They've got 10 others and who knows what else they're going to do. And those markets, the ones they've already established are growing at a phenomenal rate because they know how to work it. Folks, I want you to do more DD. Consider this company. I think it's worth your investment, but I also think you need to monitor if they're going to uplist so that you can keep tabs on your share count if they go through it. Hope I've shared something with you interesting here and I wish you the best of luck. See you folks.